Hi boys and girls, it's Miss Leah. Welcome to Godly Play. I'm so glad you are here to worship with um, us and we are going to continue our story about the faces of Easter in just a minute. Before we get to that, I have a few things to talk about. Some of you might know what's in this deep purple sack. Some of you might not have seen this before. There are some pieces of things in here. Hmm. It's purple. Haven't we been talking about the color purple during this season of Lent? See how many are in here. There's one, two, three, four. There's more. Five, six. Is there any more? Hmm. Seems like it's empty. I wonder what these could be. I remember last week we had an empty jar. And then we started adding things to it. We talked about how heavy it was getting as we added the rocks. One rock for each day of Lent. Remember the 40 days of Lent remind us of the 40 days that Jesus spent in the wilderness. And last week, that was what our story was about. So let's add our rocks for this week. One, two, three, four. I'm going to get a helper here, just a second. I need two more. Five, six, and then we need one for Sunday. Can you do one of the gray ones? Thank you, Lucy. <laughs> getting heavy. I wonder why Lent can be so heavy. Do you remember what else we've been doing? We've been taking care of our candles. As we get closer to the crucifixion, it gets a little darker and a little heavier. So let's blow out our candles together, okay? I'll be right back with our story, okay? Are you ready to worship? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for each child who's watching. We wish that we could be together. Pray that you would prepare our hearts to worship in our circle, even if we have to pretend we're together. We pray that this story would touch our hearts, and that we would learn more about the faces of Easter and the faces of our Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. So our story today, remember, is growing. And it's been growing throughout the entire season of Lent. And there's really no place to start but at the very beginning. And so each week we've been telling it from the beginning so that we can think about this story all together as one big story. So let's start again. In the beginning, there was a baby. The baby was born. Now think about this. God chose Mary to be the mother of God. And the word became a wordless child. And when Jesus looked into the eyes of the mother Mary, the cross was already there. And when Jesus looked into the eyes of the father Joseph, it was there too. And Mary and Joseph 
They cared for baby Jesus. They kept him warm and they comforted him when he cried and they protected him and gave him all he needed. And the baby began to grow. And the baby became a boy. And when the boy was 12 years old, he went with his family to the city of Jerusalem for one of the feast days for Passover. And while they were there, they celebrated with his family and with many others. And when it was time to go home, all those that were from Nazareth began to exit the city out through the city gates. But after some time, Mary and Joseph realized that Jesus was not with them. They thought that he had been with the other children, but he wasn't. And so Mary and Joseph went back to Jerusalem and they began to look for Jesus. They looked for him in the streets and the alleys, and they looked at, for him in the markets, and they looked for him where they had spent their nights. And finally, they looked for him at the temple. And there he was. He was there with the priests and the rabbis. And when Jesus spoke, they listened. They were amazed because he knew so very much. And when they spoke, Jesus listened because he wanted to know so much more. And Jesus learned all through his childhood. And when he was a man, about 30 years old, he went down to the Jordan River where his cousin John was baptizing people and teaching them to repent. And Jesus started into the water and he went towards John until he was face to face with John. Now John was kind of a wild man. He wore crazy clothes and he ate crazy food. And Jesus said to John, will you baptize me? And when he said that, it was as if John suddenly knew who Jesus really was. And then he said, you, you are the Messiah. You are the one we have been waiting for. I am not worthy to baptize you. It is you who should be baptizing me. But Jesus looked at John and he said, no, you are were to become ahead of me, to make a path for me. And then John did baptize Jesus. And Jesus went down into the darkness and chaos of the water. And when he came back out into the light, the people who were there said, that there was a dove that came out of the sky just above Jesus' head. And other people there said they heard a voice from heaven that declared that this was Jesus, God's son. Immediately after he was baptized, Jesus went out into the desert. He went to the desert to learn more about who he was and what his work was to be about. Now there wasn't much food in the desert and Jesus became hungry. And after he had been there some time, a voice came to him and pointed to some rocks and said, why don't you turn these rocks into bread and then you will not be hungry. But Jesus said, no. To be fully human requires so much more than bread. 
And then it was as if Jesus was taken up to the tallest part of the temple. And the voice said to him, throw yourself down if you are really who you say you are. The angels will keep you from crashing into the rocks. But Jesus said, no, we do not need to put our God to the test. And then it was as if Jesus was taken up to the tallest mountain where he could see the entire world. And the voice said to him, all this can be yours if you will only worship me. I will make you king of all of this. But Jesus said, no, I am to be a king, but not that kind of king. And after that, the voice left Jesus and the angels came and attended to Jesus and cared for him. And then Jesus left the desert and crossed the Jordan River again and went into the towns and villages to do his work. But what was Jesus' work? What was he going to do? You see, Jesus' work was about coming near to people, especially those that others didn't want to come near. Do you see how close Jesus is to the blind man? Do you see how his fingers are in his face? And when Jesus came near to people, they were changed. They could see those who couldn't see before. They could walk the ones who couldn't walk before. They became well. And Jesus also came to teach the people. And often he taught them in parables and words they couldn't fully understand unless they had ears to hear. But a time came when Jesus knew that it was time for him to become like a parable. And he started towards Jerusalem for the last time. I wonder which part of this story you liked best. And I wonder what you would add to the story. And I wonder what you think is important. And I wonder how you are getting ready for the mystery of Easter. Thank you, boys and girls. Have a great week.